in the past, refugees would, would say, uh, I need food, I need shelter, I need water. Um, today, in 2016, they say, where am I and where's the Wi-Fi? Because they need to connect. Just the fact they're carrying um, modern smartphones doesn't make them privileged. You know, these people are fleeing for their lives from war or from natural disaster. Today, most refugees use uh, applications like Facebook Messenger, like WhatsApp, and there are huge WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups to assist, to, to help themselves try and find uh, travel or to try and find information about where they are or how to uh, maybe apply for refugee status or whatever it is. And the cell phone has become an incredibly important part of this. Now, I'm not saying that an application is going to solve the refugee crisis. That's not going to happen. The point is, though, is technology uh, thinkers and creators and innovators can use uh, the cell phone, as a, the smartphone, as gradually going to be a conduit for assistance for a refugee. It could be through education, it could be language learning, it could be integration in society. It doesn't just stop at the cell phone or the, the smartphone. For instance, in the Zatari Jordan uh, refugee camp, uh, they're using Internet of Things devices to test uh, whether water is clean or not. Um, and that it means that uh, the whole of the camp, running of the camp is far more efficient. Um, and these kinds of solutions um, didn't exist 10 years ago. And now that we can start producing them now. But there is this incredible sort of movement inside the tech world which and a, an approach to things which can really take on problems. In 2015, I had the opportunity to participate in the Foreign Economic Davos, in the ambit of being part of the Global Shapers of Lisboa. E no último dia tive a oportunidade de participar no Survivor Experience. Portanto, numa hora nós conseguimos viver efetivamente o que é que. Não, conseguimos tentar viver o que é que estava a acontecer num campo de refugiados. E no final foi partilhada uma história de um rapaz de 10 anos que vivia em Hong Kong e que sozinho conseguiu criar um, um, um parque de diversões para crianças, uma coisa pequena, na Nigéria. E eu percebi que se um rapaz de 10 anos conseguia fazer algo tão inspirador e tão mobilizador de uma comunidade, eu também própria devia fazer algo para, para ajudar a tentar resolver, nomeadamente a questão dos refugiados no Norte da África, Síria e por aí. E então isso levou-me a ter ouvido falar do Tech Fugees, que surgiu em setembro de 2015, e perceber que por que não trazer o Tech Fugees para Portugal e organizar um conjunto de iniciativas que realmente podiam, por um lado, aumentar um, o conhecimento que as pessoas têm para esta área, mas por outro lado também juntar designers, juntar programadores, juntar um, pessoas interessadas nesta área e refugiados para encontrar soluções reais para problemas reais. Tech for G's has launched now Tech for G's Lisbon um, as part of our global network of innovators and technologists who want to engage with refugee issues. We, we obviously wanted to double down on the fact that there were 50,000 people in Lisbon, all in the technology world, um, who might be interested in what we were doing. And of course, we've also found some fantastic partners and people who want to be involved with what we're doing here in Lisbon. Há em Portugal pessoas que, estejam a usar, que estão a usar claramente a tecnologia para ajudar refugiados. Um caso é o Speak. O Speak é uma plataforma de, que ajuda, ajuda pessoas, a, a, a integração de pessoas num país ou numa cidade através do estudo das línguas. Quando eu era um criança, nos anos 70s, nos anos 70s, quando meu pai uh, aplicou para a escola de que eu estava indo para pegar alguns crianças da nossa escola e pegar some food and some clothes to a refugee camp that was in Britain because these refugees had come from Bangladesh uh, from a natural disaster and, uh, and we got out of the van and we played football with the kids and we handed over the, the food and the clothes and um, that experience taught me that these people were just like us. They'd just been in a terrible situation 